So let me ask you about, we talked about false memories, but you know, in the legal system, false confessions. I remember reading uh, 1984 where, sorry for the dark turn of our conversation, but uh, through torture, you can make people say anything and essentially remember anything. I wonder to which degree there's like truth to that. If you look at the torture that happened in the Soviet Union to, for confessions, all that kind of stuff. How much can you really get people to really, yeah, to force false memories, I guess? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, um, there's a lot of history of this actually in uh, the criminal justice system. Uh, you might have heard the term the third degree. Mm -hmm. If you actually look it up historically, it was a very intense <laughs> set of beatings and, you know, starvation and physical uh, demands that they would place on people to get them to talk. And, and you know, there was certainly a lot of work in the that's been done by the CIA in terms of enhanced ter interrogation techniques. Mm -hmm. And it, from what I understand, the, the research actually shows that they just produce what people want to hear, <laughs> not necessarily the, the information that, that is being looked for. And the reason is, is that I mean, there's different reasons. I mean, one is people just get tired of being tortured and just say whatever. But uh, another part of it is is that you create a very interesting set of conditions where there's an authority figure telling you something that you did this. We know you did this. We have witnesses saying you did this. So now you start to question yourself. Then they put you under stress. Maybe they're not feeding you. Maybe they're kind of like making you be cold or, you know, exposing you to like uh, music that you can't stand or something, whatever it is, right? It's like they're, they're creating this physical stress. And so stress starts to act on, you know, starts to downregulate the prefrontal cortex. You're not necessarily as good at monitoring the accuracy of stuff. Then they start to get nice to you and they say, imagine, you know, okay, I know you don't remember this, but maybe we can walk you through how it could have happened. And they feed you the information. And so you're in this weakened mental state and you're being encouraged to imagine things by people who give you a plausible scenario. Mm -hmm. And at some point, certain people can be very coaxed into creating a memory for something that never happened. And and there's actually some pretty convincing cases out there where you don't know exactly the truth. Uh, there's a sheriff, for instance, who came to believe that he had a false memory, uh, I mean, that he had a memory of doing sexual abuse based on, you know, essentially, I think it was, uh, um, you know, I'm not going to tell the story because I don't remember it well <laughs> enough to necessarily accurately give it to you, but people could look this stuff up. There are definitely stories out there like this where people confess to crimes that they just didn't do and objective evidence came out later on. Um, but there's a basic recipe for it, which is you feed people the information that you want them to remember. Mm -hmm. You stress them out. You have an authority figure kind of like pushing this information on them. Uh, or you motivate them to produce the information you're looking for, and that pretty much over time gives you what you want. It's really tragic that centralized power can can use these kinds of tools to destroy lives. Sad. <laughs>